Well, isn't this a fun day? We got a keyboard. This is the KL90 from Kiko's Lab. This is the first keyboard that this designer has ever put out in a group by, and I am lucky enough to have it today because um, it's been a long time coming. This has I've waited eight months for this board. This is the FR4 kit edition. So what that means is that this just comes with like the PCB plate and all the random necessary stuff. So we're gonna be taking a look at that. We're gonna open it up and see what that's all about. We're gonna be building it out with some holy pandas of all things in this relatively cheap board. We got cat milkshake, which again, the kidding that I'm gonna be putting on it is worth more than the keyboard. And then some nice mint uh, C3 equals stabs from like round two or three that I've just had lying around forever. Cause you know, I like mint. It's a good color. That's why my holy pandas are mint. These things, they just look nice. So, you know what? Let's stop messing around. Let's get into the board and I'll tell you a bit of my feelings on this kit because I think it looks interesting and I hope it sounds just as good as I think it's gonna sound. So let's just go ahead and open that box with a metal spudger and not a knife because I'm a smart person and that's what smart people do. Oh, thanks, Kiko. <laughs> so going through everything that we get in the box, we get some standard hex nuts and standoffs so we can put the whole thing together. We also get two encoders out of the box because you can set this board up with either two encoders or an encoder and an OLED screen, which we have right here. I decided to go with the OLED and single encoder, and I think that just looks pretty great, but Two encoders got that nice symmetry. We also get some nice bump on feet, just really simple stuff, and a couple of other goodies as well. Oh, that's a nice sticker. Nice touch. Oh, and the oh yeah, I saw this. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's that's sweet. Thanks, Kiko. Oh, that looks nice. That's a stuff. So with the FR4 kit, all the pieces are made out of FR4, including the plate, the bottom plate piece, which has the Kiko logo on it, and your choice of either a hot swap or a soldered PCB. I went for the soldered because I just wanted to try out soldering on a keyboard for the first time. So as I was sorting everything, I, I had this realization. I have to loop stabilizers. <laughs> Pro tip if you're building a board with an OLED screen, throw some foam under there, it'll keep it nice and secure. So let's go ahead and put some switches in. Oh, that was easy. So let's go ahead and plug in the board. Plug her in. Aw, oh, yeah! <laughs> Not that my excitement's out of the way, uh, but let's put that bottom plate on. It's all together. So unfortunately, I don't have any fancy footage of me putting on the keycaps. I'm, I, it's very sad. I don't know what happened to it. But here's the board in all its glory. Take a look at that sexy B-roll and tell me what you guys think about the board down in the comments below. I've had this board now for several months i started filming this video back when i got the board in september it is now january 29th as of recording this i'm a professional so for all intents and purposes i consider this a long-term review so a couple things to know while building the board first off there was nothing wrong with the layout of the pcb or anything like that there was nothing obviously broken everything worked the only faults of, of the board were when i didn't fully solder something in so you know user error over creator error that's what we like to see another thing is that when putting on the bottom fr4 plate you do have to use those standoffs and the hex screws that came with the kit you only get four which means that you're very limited on where your mounting options are so 
if you wanted something a little bit more stiff, uh, I'd recommend placing them on like the outer tabs, I believe, or like the <laughs> the inner bottom left and right tabs and uh, on the top and bottom. But yeah, just putting this together was kind of a pain uh, when trying to assemble because the standoffs and the washers, the washers didn't want to stay in place. So uh, you kind of have to take your time. I got very frustrated and because of my frustration, uh, the Kiko logo is not on the bottom of the board. Epson chat boys. It's a really funky layout because this is an FR4 kit for a board that was originally gasket mount inside an alu uh, case or a polycarb and 3D print, I believe, are the ones that have been made so far. There's also wooden kits coming from Barrett Creative. He does some really cool work. You might know him from PBT Toby. Now the board is a 75% layout with this left macro uh, column. So it kind of has the space of a 10 keyless board, which if you're looking for like a space saving keyboard, uh, I'd probably take a look at more like compact 75 boards, uh, like the GMMK Pro or the uh, Keychron Q1, but those cost more than this F1 kit. Or <laughs> this F1 kit, this FR4 kit. I believe I paid around $90 after shipping and whatever taxes that Shopify may uh, take. So, I mean, for what you get, a 75% port with an OLED screen, with a rotary encoder, I think it's, it's a really great deal, especially because if you want to upgrade this board later on, it's super easy. You can just like 3D print your own or buy a wooden case from Barrett or anything like that. I'd say the only problems that I have with this board besides putting it together uh, during use is that because the USB-C port is not uh, daughter boarded or anything like that, uh, and it is a zero degree angle when uh, having all four bump ons on, it does kind of get some stress on it with uh, custom coiled cables, uh, like my cookie cables one that I got to <laughs> match the milkshake set. I think it looks great. But just because of the thickness of the coil, I would guess you would say, like the diameter of it, it does put some strain on the USB-C connection, and that is worrisome for later down the line. Uh, thankfully, some of his newer designs, like the Formula 1800, which should be getting an FR4 kit soon, are using the AI-03 daughter board. Uh, so... If that breaks, it's really easy to just get your hands on another one or make yourself your own. I hope that at the second revision of the KL90, it, it, it should have the daughter board, uh, even if it does break backwards compatibility with cases or anything like that. I think it is for the best. Another thing to note is that because of, of the USB-C port, the escape and F1 keys are rotated sideways, so I might interfere with cherry keycaps, like cherry profile keycaps, but since I don't have that, I don't think it's too big of a deal, and considering that they're more lesser used keys, I don't think it'll be a big deal for a majority of the people out there. Now, if you do have one of these FR4 kits, and I know there's 16 of you other guys out there, why haven't you made a video on this? You haven't shared it in the Discord, at least not that I've seen. Theoretically, Kiko should be making uh, the case files for the 3D print available online. He might be open sourcing uh, the PCB design too, which would be great. So the community kind of gets uh, more out of this keyboard. This board does have QMK and VIA compatibility out of the box, so if you like to use the VIA software, that's great. But unfortunately, at least since the last I've checked, they might have updated it, the encoders don't work on the VIA software. It kind of sucks. They only work as like a push button. You don't get the left and right actuation. So because I was frustrated with that, I was actually recommended by a community member the Vile firmware. And because of that, and with the help of the Vile community, we now have a Vile compatible firmware for the KL90. It is available on GitHub. I'll have a firmware link down below. So if you have a KL90 and you want to try out uh, the Vile firmware, it'll be right there for you. This board has a bunch of different layout support. There's split space bar support. There's uh, ISO support, stepped caps lock. Uh, I just went with a pretty generic ANSI layout myself. 
but Kiko has made a lot of his projects pretty customizable. So if you hopped on that Alora 65 group by, you lucky sons of or you want to hop onto his super customizable Formula 1800 Group 5 that will have an FR4 kit, definitely take a look at the Kiko's Lab Discord. I'll have a link down in the description so you can keep up with all the Group 5 dates if you want to get on any of his future boards or maybe any future revisions of the KL90. Other than that, considering how cheap this kit was and how well supported it might be by the community and by Kiko himself by releasing those, files later on i do think that any of his fr4 kits are great investments and i think the kl90 fr4 if you can get your hands on one uh is something that you should hop on if you're interested in custom mechanical keyboards at all it's a great platform for just kind of experimenting with different switches if you get the hot swap version for experimenting with different layouts if you get the uh, soldered version and for trying out a whole bunch of different cases with which i mean you literally can just slot this into any of the cases and i do think if i do end up getting another case i'll make it gasket mounted with some thick gaskets because i heard that the gaskets were a little bit on the thinner side for the alu case and the polycarb so uh stay tuned for that if i ever get around to that <laughs> if you enjoyed any of this content please you go ahead and leave a like and i'll hit you with a sound test right after this hit my face on the screen when it appears so you can subscribe and uh, check out all the links down below anyways i'll see you guys next time